us at 3S Network, like us on Facebook, or comment at 3 Sports Network. Welcome to 3SN, everybody. I'm Alex Salaverson, and with me is James, I don't care what you think, Dotson. We are here live at the Crane Room Bar and Grill in beautiful Newcastle, Pennsylvania. It's salad night, everybody. So if you're one of those people who have been on a diet for seven years and have not lost anything, this is the place for you. Dotson, what's cracking? Uh, not too much, though. I wonder who you're aiming that little salad joke at right now. Mostly myself. Mostly yourself. Mostly myself. Okay, okay. It doesn't matter what I try to eat, it's just, <laughs> I don't lose weight, but I don't somehow gain it either. But we're not here to talk about our dietary needs. We're here to talk sports. We're here to talk fantasy football, especially. And uh, completing your, or extending, I should say, your virtual draft guide here from 3SM, we want to talk a lot about the running backs tonight here and you know when it comes to fantasy football running backs are what's going to make or break your team from top to bottom am i right running backs are king even in leagues we're passing touchdowns are six points for the majority of um owners running backs is the way to go absolutely i mean it starts right from the top the obvious number one pick unless you have a completely messed up scoring system the number one pick is adrian peterson Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's even some uh, websites out there that Ari that said Arian Foster should be number one because Adrian Peterson's 2,097 yard pain would have wore him down. But remember, he did that coming off an injury, um, and he almost broke the record. So I don't think that's going to really be much of a problem. So you, you don't, we don't have to spend too much time about it. Adrian Peterson's the best running back in the league. Here's a question everybody's going to ask. 2,500 yards, yes or no? Um, probably not, but... It, it would take a miracle, put it that way. It would yeah. take a miracle to do that. I don't think that's going to happen, but I mean, he, he's going to get close. He'll probably get close to 2,000 yards again. I think he'll be close. I, I don't think he'll hit 2,000 yards No, again. it's hard to do that twice. I mean, I mean, let's just be realistic here, but no, it is a no-brainer. AP is the number one guy on your board without any in my mind whatsoever. There is a lot of debate for the number two guy on the list. Uh, there's lots of possibilities here. Alex, who do you have as your number two back? Well, I had either between Marshawn Lynch and Jamal Charles. Um, Jamal Charles managed to get 1,500 yards and 5.3 yards per carry last year. And um, it's pretty, you know, crazy to think about what he'll be able to do now that he's at full strength. He was injured a little bit, or going into a little bit. Uh, he was injured a little bit going into the season last year. And now the Andy Reid's there, and I wouldn't say a capable quarterback in Alex Smith, but one that doesn't lose the game for you. He should be able to be pretty consistent. I think so, too. And I, I kind of like Jamal Charles as, as a number two back. And... I mean, I should say he's the number two overall back on our board. Um, I, I just think the fact that you have a new system now, you're going to have a much better quarterback than you've had in the last three or four years. He had a good year last year coming off of an injury. Yeah. So, oh, thank, thank you. you so much. So, to me, it's obvious that he can only go up. And he had a pretty darn good year last year. So, I think Jamal Charles is a very good pick for you to make at that number two overall spot. The only issue may be the number of touchdowns, because he hasn't had as many touchdowns as some of the other guys, especially someone like an Arian Foster. Um, that might be something that you need to look at. I mean, that's where Marshawn Lynch, if you have a touchdown-heavy league, that he could bounce all the way up to number two or three. Well, most uh, magazines and websites have Doug Martin in number two, and I'm kind of surprised by that. He had a very good rookie campaign, 14, I think he had around 1,400 yards, but he only reached the end zone twice. And, you know, the typical sophomore slump thing, you know, it's, it's not like official, but it's in everyone's mind. Can you really expect him to repeat it? I don't know. I don't know if he's just worthy of a number two spot. So, um, well, you said it right there. 
the word was sophomore. He's going into his second year. You all know what happens when they go into his second year. That normally votes true, especially with quarterbacks. It's not as true, I don't think, with running backs. One of the big things I can think of, I remember when um, Adrian Peterson went into his second year, he went and went above and beyond everybody's expectations. Great rookie year, and then he went and extended it. He just never really had a bad year. He's Adrian Peterson. Yeah, and other than years where he's gotten hurt, he really hasn't. So, but then again, that's just Adrian Peterson. So I'm not too worried about a Doug Martin type player, but I understand if people might want to be a little bit hesitant, and especially something that you said right before we got on the air. How many touchdowns did you have last year? Only two. Only two. Only two. That's a bit scary. Yes, that number's gonna go up. I'll guarantee well, that. I, I would up, think but. so too, but the, just the concept of it is he wasn't utilized in the end zone as much as his fantasy owners hoped for. Will it be the same? Yeah, probably. He'll probably get more than two touchdowns, but will, will it be a touchdown machine? I don't know. Um, now, like you said, Marshawn Lynch is considered number two in a lot of leagues. Most have Doug Martin. I have Marshawn Lynch in number three, actually. He averaged better than 4.2 yards per carry you know, prior to last season, and. Uh, just the whole off, and that team is on the, its way up. Russell Martin, uh, Marshawn Lynch, he can catch the ball. He, he's a good reception running back, too. You got the Pirates on the brain, man. It's Russell Wilson, not Russell Martin. What I say? You said Russell Martin. I, I did? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just too upset about the Pirates. Oh, uh, we, we'll save that for another day, but no, you're right. Russell Wilson up there is doing well. Uh, the addition of Percy Harvin was looking good for a Marshawn Lynch type deal, but now he's injured, so now they're going to have to almost go back to. The old ways, which was feeding the rock to beast mode Marshawn Lynch. And you know what? Maybe the Percy Harvin injury actually will help boost Marshawn Lynch up those ranges as well. I could even see that. Their defense helps them out a lot, too. You know what their uh, average points per game was? For, uh, it was less than 20, I'm sure of that. I think, it was, no, it was like 13 or 11 or something exactly. like that. Exactly. I mean, huge. I mean, they're, you know, home field advantage is kind of overused in pros, but the Seahawks really have a home field advantage, and they put up points. So this is, I, I think, players from the Seahawks, uh, I should say players from the Seahawks, but just the whole Seahawks team just seems to be kind of on the rise here. So they're going to get complimented from their defense and, you know, what they're going to be able to do on offense with uh, Lynch and uh, Russell Wilson. So it's it's a good time to be a Seahawk fan, and Marshall Lynch would be a solid uh, starting running back. Oh, absolutely he would be in. Uh, I don't know. No, no, it's an obvious. We don't have to go too much into it. Yeah, yeah I mean, exactly. So, um, no, go ahead. Who's your yeah. number three? Well, what, what's really interesting who we haven't mentioned yet is Aaron Foster. How, how are we not mentioning Aaron Foster right now, I guess is my question. I don't think it's as much as he's not worthy of being a top five back. It's just much as, you know, the depth there than anything. Um, and we're expecting... No, I agree, Alex. Uh, Arian Foster could be good. The, the thing is, I don't know, those double-digit touchdowns are what saves him. He's just kind of one of those guys, maybe he's just been so good and so consistent that you forget about him? I don't know. You're right, he really hasn't. I even haven't thought about him that much. I wonder why. I think he's not as flashy as he used to be. I, I don't know what it is. Well, he just doesn't feel like he's up there, but then you see he just produces over and over and over and over again. Well, and all during the offseason, we keep hearing about his injuries, things like that, too. That might be kind of pushing him down on the chart as well. Thank you so much. Uh, Another thing, I mean, I just look, you know, want to look at trend analysis. 2010, 600 receiving yards. 2011, 600 receiving yards. 2012, only 200 receiving yards. So maybe he's getting weeded out of the pass game. Maybe that's something that, you know, could concern you a bit. But probably. still, though, double-digit touchdowns rushing each of the last three years. Well, I mean, I had him at number five. So, I mean, you know, I didn't completely forget about him. But the last three years, he's been the top. Right. Well, and that's the thing. Three. We consistently rank him down, but when you just look at the numbers, and if you look at our customized cheat sheets on our website, you plug everything in and see exactly what a guy can do, what does he have? Well, he's at the number two overall, without too much difficulty at all. So, you know, don't, I, I don't know, don't buy too much into it. I, I think that he's going to be absolutely just fine 
Um, I, I can see him probably being a number two again. Just you don't know, think about it. It's really a preference. I mean, people's preference put Doug Martin at number two. Like I said, I don't think so. It's that's what I'm saying. This year's class of running back can go. It's so deep. You can go either way. So there's no like I n- have not heard a the only constant I heard with the running backs. Adrian Peterson number one. And that's it. Some people had Trent Richardson at number two. Could he be? Trent Maybe. Richardson is number two. Stop. That's uh, the point I'm trying to make is... I mean, well, if anybody's going to be worried about a sophomore slump, maybe that's where you're going to look. And Cleveland of all places. But, I mean, yeah, you got between him and Doug Martin, who, by the way, we didn't misread his uh, his numbers. That was two receiving touchdowns last year. He did have 10 rushing, or I'm sorry, 11 rushing touchdowns last year. So, but again, you just didn't hear about it. He got a lot of those in one week. Yeah. So that's a big part of that, too, that you take out that one big week, which just happened to me right after I traded him. We're not going to go into that discussion again. Uh, I think that's a big part of it right there, that, you know, you got to be consistent. Yeah, maybe he'll. Maybe somebody like a Doug Martin could get you one big week. Can you really project that with any of these players? No. Trent Richardson is somebody who is going to go into a beast mode one of those games. He's going to break six tackles on his way to an end zone. Broken well, tackles don't show up on your fantasy stats, though, either. So that's well, also, something to look at, too. Well, also, the AFC North defenses, see, at least on paper, seem to be weakening. Ravens lost a lot of players. Steelers lost players. Um... And the Browns are building their team around Trent Richardson. So Trent Richardson, his value is definitely increasing. I definitely think he's going to have a solid 1,300 yards rushing this year. The big thing you forget about with him is how many passes he catches, too. Well, so yeah. I mean, over 50 last year. I mean, I think he's a shoe in to get over 50 again this year. Uh, maybe at least one, maybe two receiving touchdowns on the way. Who but, knows? But, but, but you said it, though, the sophomore thing, and then he got a new head coach now, too. But think about the system that that is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's Chudzinski. I think it's going to be, they're going to get in the ball. They're you know growing pains off. Yeah. Um, here's something that just came in on our uh, on our chat wires from The Lost Cause. Ray Rice is barely a top 10 running back right now. Your thoughts, Alex? No, I actually noticed that earlier, too, and I was actually just getting to him. And he really is someone that's kind of being overlooked. Maybe it's just because of we keep hearing so much transitioning with the Ravens, but he's, as long as I can remember, he's been a solid producer. So, but what do they have now that they really haven't had in the past? Guys like Bernard Pierce who can really come in. I mean, they had Willis McGahee for a couple of years who could come in a little it bit. All, but nobody has been as good in assault. Bernard Pierce outrushed him, I think, in two or three games last year, where they both got significant touches. So, you know, that, also, you, I those, think he's getting old. I mean, well, what, and remember, getting, they, resigned, they resigned Vontae Leach, too. Yeah. So, Ray Rice is definitely happy about that. Right. So, yeah, there's no reason why Ray Rice should be out of your top 10. Some websites had him at number nine. Others had him as, like, four. It's been a mixed bag with him, but it does, for whatever reason, the spotlight's kind of shifting away from him. No, I mean, I, but, I agree. I think he's barely cracking the top ten for me. And, and also, because his, his touches went down last year, too. You know what I mean? So he had 291 carries and 76 catches in 2011, compared to 257 rushes and 61 receptions in uh, 2012. So that might have something to do with his ranking going down a now, bit. Now, the other reason why you still have him high on your list is if you're in a PPR league, because he still will catch probably 60 passes this year. I, I think that's pretty safe to say, but I, I'm still worried about what Bernard Pierce is going to do. I mean, he averaged almost 10 touches per game during the playoffs last year. I mean, that's saying something right there about where they're giving the ball. They're spreading it out, which as a fan of the game, I have no problem with. But as a Ray Rice owner, I'm concerned. Watch out for Bernard Pierce. I mean, he also, what, it was seven touches per game during the regular season, about ten touches per game during the playoffs. So maybe even look at Bernard Pierce as, you know, a sleeper in your late round that could really pop up. All it takes is one injury, and he's going to be huge, but he could possibly be a uh, a borderline flex play, depending on how they uh, run throughout the year. Could be something to think about as you're going through your draft. If nothing else, he might be in handcuffs. So. Someone who's also been an enigma has been Chris Johnson. Just a few years ago, he was uh, battling Adrian Peterson for that top spot. And now in most rankings in the draft books I see and on ESPN.com, any media outlet, um, barely have him making the top 10. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, remember, I barely have him in the top 20. Yeah, I think I got him at number 14 on my list. Yeah, right? I remember so. that whole contract thing. And ever since then, it just kind of seemed like 
it hasn't been the same Chris Johnson. Is it all him? Is it Tennessee? You know, a mixed bag. So. Well, well, you know, if you were a um, a radio host out in St. Louis, you would say the reason why he did well, got his contract, and did it terribly is because he was using performance-enhancing drugs. Then he got his big contract, and then he said, I don't need to take it anymore, and then all of a sudden he stinks. Mm -hmm. That's another story for another day. Yeah. As for Chris Johnson, you're right. I don't know what to think about him, because it seems like ever since I started drafting him in my league, he's just tanked. And, you know, it's not... That's the thing. What have you done for me lately? Yeah. I don't know really how much of it is him. I don't know how is players around him. But when you look, last... In 2010, he had 11 touchdowns. Last two years, he had 10 touchdowns in the two years combined. It's not producing nearly enough to warrant a spot on my team. I'm going to try to stay away from him if I can. I think there are a lot more options out there. If I have Chris Johnson as the best available running back, I might look in that probably second or third round range at that point. I'm either looking at another running back there, or I'm looking to go elsewhere because Chris Johnson... For me, uh, he's not, not worth not the time. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna talk about a couple more in our top ten here, and we'll get into those maybe sleeper backs, maybe into the fourth, fifth round that maybe you're not thinking about as much, but you really ought to. When we come back, we're live at the Crane Room Bar and Grill again. It is salad night here, seven ninety five for a salad made your way. Anything you want on it. Well, you want chicken, you want steak, you want shrimp, you want lamb. What kind of dressing, what kind of toppings, you decide. They make it for you. It's also $3 sangria night. And, of course, while the Buckos are playing here, that means that you get Icy Light. It's two fifty. When we come back, more fantasy football talk. 360 Sports Network. We'll be back in a minute. You're the place to go to watch the game. Looking for a great game day atmosphere that hosts great food, great service, and the most variety of craft beer in town? Then come on down to the Crane Room Bar and Grill in Newcastle, where the beer is always cold and the best wings are right here. The specials every night, there's always a good deal waiting for you at the Crane Room. Come out on Mondays for $2.23 ounce domestic drafts from 7 to 9, Tuesdays, Burger Nights. It's by five dollar burgers from seven to nine p.m. Of course, if Fox is your gig, Wednesday is your night. It's Fox the night uh, goes bonanza. Thursday it's pound for pound wings all night at two dollars domestic drafts from seven to nine, and mixed drinks are half off every Friday from five to seven p.m. And Saturdays from seven to nine it's one dollar off draft beers. And for every Pirates game this year, enjoy a 23-ounce Icy Light for just $2. Whether well, it's to watch the game at the bar, enjoy a night out at the outdoor patio, or sit down with your honey for dinner at the restaurant, the Crane Room has everything that you need. So come on down to the Crane Room, bar and grill, get your fix on wings, sports and beer. Just off Route 18 in beautiful, sunny Newcastle, Pennsylvania. It's that time of year again, where you try to fill rosters, scoop and haunt rumors before the other guy in your league can, watching NFL action more for the players and not so much for the games. Yeah, it's fantasy football time again. With all the analysis and information floating around the internet, who should you trust? Well, look no further than the 360 Sports Network's own Fantasy Football Toolkit. Join me, the Lost Cause, and the Mad Scientist every week as we break down stats, games, player performances, injuries, and a whole lot more. But who wants to wait a week? Get your fill of fantasy football information in my daily segment featured on the 360 Sports Network, the Daily Picks and Blink. In under 10 minutes, you get fantasy football information, NFL news, injury reports, starts, sits, studs, duds, previews, reviews, and a whole lot more. Basically, everything to help make your fantasy football team sizzle. So check out the Fantasy Football Toolkit and the Picks and Blink at 360sportsnetwork.com as well as fantasyfootballtoolkit.com. All to make sure that your team isn't a lost cause. The 360 Sports Network is not a blog. We are a network, a collaboration of websites, blogs, radio stations, restaurants, and more. 
We are a group created by the fans for the fans. Whatever the fans feel is newsworthy in the world of sports, we talk about. We believe that everybody is a fan. Everyone is an analyst. That's the whole 360 concept. We invite all fans to join the 360 Sports Network by posting on their website directly at 360sportsnetwork.com or by linking their posts to the collaborative network. You can also be a part of the show tonight by tweeting us at 3S Network. Thank you for your interest in the 360 Sports Network. Now back to the crane room in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. This is 3SN Live. Welcome back to the Kramer Bar and Grill, 3SN Live here. Alex Laverson, James Dodson talking fantasy football, all sorts of lovely stuff, especially with the running backs that we have. Going through some of our top 10 running backs here. Uh, before we continue with that discussion, also want to mention real quick, you heard during the commercial break there, about the fantasy football toolkit. We are up and running big time. Thank you to the Lost Cause um, with all these daily updates, the daily pigskin link. All talking about who do you, what the big news is in fantasy football. You go to uh, 360pointsnetwork.com. We got all sorts of stuff for you there. Daily input, lots of new posts based on what's going on, what new people you know, what uh, what's going on well. And you're just really distracting me over there. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to kind of our, ignore everything. One of our staff members thought it was a funny idea to compromise my notes, and now I can't access my iPhone, which is where my notes are. Can't trust technology at what did you all. Do? Goodbye. Can't did trust you? technology Goodbye. at all. Let's talk about somebody you can trust. This is somebody who maybe we haven't trusted in the past. You haven't trusted them because of the running back by committee splitting time, but it sounds like this year they're going to run this guy until he literally spills his guts. And yes, that was a pun because it is C.J. Spiller up in Buffalo. He is a top five running back in my mind because they've said they're going to run him essentially until he throws up. Well, I mean, at least in my eyes, I kind of feel, I just don't want to touch anyone from Buffalo, if that makes sense. You're still, the, you're still not a, Like you said, the running back from committee thing, things like that. I just um, never really... Well, that's the way it used to be. I, now it sounds well, like yeah, they're I, I, flat no. out saying they're going to run him until he I think he's up. someone you definitely keep your eye on. You know what I mean? How high do you take him, though? Beats okay. top 10? Um, I had him... I actually did have him, I think, in my top 10. I think I had him in 9. If I could access my notes... See, see here's but, the thing. He's never had over 200 touches until last year, and that was because Fred Jackson got injured. And he went and exploded. And now it sounds, they're saying it is his job, period. I, I think he gets over 300 touches this year. I think he is a legitimate top five back this year. Well, mind. he's going to be Buffalo's, uh, they're going to put the offense around him. He's going to be their star, I think. And, you know, the quarterback situation isn't that great. Now, you could also say because of the quarterback situation, they're going to focus more on the run, too. But C.J. Spiller will be used a lot. That's the bottom line. Right. Well, exactly. And, I mean, you made a great point there, question of who's going to be the quarterback. Is it going to be E.J. Manuel? Will it be excuse me, Kevin Cobb up there? Doesn't matter, though. I mean, C.J. Spiller is going to catch balls on the backfield the same way like Richardson did with a rookie quarterback in, in Cleveland who really didn't do that much. He still caught his passes. He still got his runs. I think Spiller is such a big part of that offense in all facets, running, catching. I wouldn't surprise me if I see him in the return game still as well. Well, so. I mean, they said, see, I have I have here on my notes that the coaches were talking about they're going to feed him until he throws up. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, well, if you really want to know how I feel about people from Buffalo, just ask the Lost Cause talking to us right now, and I'm not going to say it, but I agree wholeheartedly. I agree wholeheartedly. It's like something I'm... It's like an inside joke or something. Or... Ignore Alex. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, but anyway, really, I think C.J. Spiller is borderline top five. If you look at the the basic scoring, the standard scoring, when you go onto our <coughs> excuse me, onto our website, 360sportsnetwork.com, if you go and create those customizable cheat sheets, and if you just go with a standard scoring system, that is 
you know, 10 yards equals one point, six points for a touchdown, no PPR or any of that sort of stuff, then you're going to have at running back AP number one, Arian Foster, don't forget about him, it's number two, Jamal Charles three, Doug Martin four, CJ Spiller five. And that's just with our projections as we have them at the moment. Obviously those can change. Obviously you have personal preferences, bye weeks, all that stuff. So take it as you will. Going six through ten, we have, uh, based on these projections, Marshawn Lynch, Trent Richardson, Ray Rice, LaShawn McCoy, and Steven Jackson, two guys we haven't talked about yet, rounding out the top ten. Well, how do you feel about Alfred Morris? You know, and a lot of it's going to come down to the whole RG3 situation, who every day ESPN obsesses over, so... Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I thought they obsessed over, like, Tom Brady and Tim, Tim Tebow. Tebow, but... That's all yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I'm not as worried about Alfred Morris being linked to the health of RG3. The main reason is they have a guy by the name of Kirk Cousins, who, in my mind, still might be a better pro quarterback than RG3. I know, shoot me for saying that, but... I don't think that you're going to lose that much with Kirk Cousins under, under center because he can hand the ball off and he can throw it with no problem. He played for a game and threw over 300 yards, yeah. brought him back to a, for a uh, fourth quarter overtime win. It's not like the guy can't play. It's not like when Kirk Cousins is in there, they're going to stack the box because he can't throw. So I'm not worried about that. Same thing, maybe durability. He was a six-round pick. I don't know how much work he had in college. A full workload last year all through the season. He managed it. Can he do it a second year in a row? I mean, put it this way. We now have three guys in their second year who are on their sophomore year, so you got to worry about a potential sophomore slump, I guess. But, I mean, you could go any direction you want to, I guess, and, and at least think about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know more about Kirk Cousins than I do, but I do remember his uh, late drive last year. Oh, absolutely. So and, I trust your opinion on it. And um, But, I mean... I mean, he had a great rookie campaign. So I mean, I mean, I, I guess yeah. he can be overvalued in that sense. But yeah, and you know, you worry about the sophomore slump. I, so. Again, I mean, put it this way: at that point, I'm seeing probably it would be between Alfred Morris, LaShawn McCoy, Stephen Jackson, maybe Matt Forte. I'm gonna go with somebody who has shown me stuff for a multitude of years. Not saying that Alfred Morris can't do it, but if I had a choice of all of those, I would probably stray away from Morris. Okay. Just because there's that risk. I mean, there's going to be a risk of pretty much anybody. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know, but that's just me. Here's something I noticed, though. All the running backs we talked about so far are guys that are coming back to the same situation. Really, the biggest difference is C.J. Spiller now being the feature back and with a new quarterback. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. Here's somebody coming to a new team with a powerful, powerful offense, a throwing offense first. That's Steven Jackson going to Atlanta. He's right on the border of being a top 10. So That's a good fit. I, I think, think it is, too. I really think it's a great because fit. Because they have a great all-around team, great offense. Exactly. And now Steven Jackson, just he's, he just has that feel to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't catch a million passes. Oh, no. But I mean, he'll catch three per game without too much uh, difficulty, I would say. Get you a bunch of yards, you know, a touchdown here or there, but he's a guy who will he'll get his touches, about 300 per year, and he's going to do something with it. And I think it's a huge upgrade for what Michael Turner, I, I thought Michael Turner just got fat last year, put it, put it bluntly. Yeah, he ran his course, I think. Yeah, I mean, Steven Jackson, I don't know. The one thing I would worry about with Steven Jackson is the age. He's now hit 30, and we all know what happens when running backs hit 30, they start to decline. Do you see a decline for him this year, or is he going to continue to push well, forward? Well, I, I, I mean, I think just the fact that it's a good fit, at least in my eyes, makes him a good option at running back. Um, yeah, if he was in St. Louis, or well, I wouldn't say that just if he was in St. Louis, but if he was somewhere else, I could see you know there being a problem. But this. To me, it seems like a good fit. He's going to have good support, you know, the passing and things like that. I think it'd be a decent, a decent pick. I think so too. I guess I don't know. Same thing I'm worried about is just at the age. We know that he's going to fit into that system. He's going to fit into it well. So I'm not worried about that. I don't know. I think if I have a pick right at the end of the first round, like pick 12, pick 11, I look at getting him. It's a back-to-back -back running back type pick coming through. 
I think it's an absolute steal of a pick, honestly, that he could be that late. He could be a really stud player. He's shown it before. I don't see that being anything different. Another guy right around that point, especially if you're in a PPR league, people always forget about him. And I think it's kind of like what we get with Arian Foster. He just keeps doing what he does. You kind of forget about him. That's Matt Forte. Man, he's a guy who will go and put up 50 catches every year. He had that great year, and then he just kind of seemed to, like, phase out, at least in my opinion. I mean, it's just not, he's not, like, one of the hotter picks. He, you get what I'm saying? Just no, I do. It, it doesn't feel like a great pick. It scares you. I understand that. Yeah. Thing is, though, the thing that you look at is that he's right at, if reaching it at all, right at the 1,000 yard line. He doesn't exactly put the ball in the end zone a lot. He averaged five touchdowns over the last three years. So where's his points coming from? His points come from the receiving, his receptions yeah. and his receiving yards, averaging over 50 each of the last three years. Do you know who we have not talked about? What we talked about? Frank Gore. Frank Gore. Why haven't we talked about Frank Gore? I don't know. You would, he, de he deserves consideration as a top. Uh, I think depending on how many people in your league, too. Well, I mean, naturally. If you're talking 10, 10 teams, so you're talking 20 running backs that are definitely starting on all these teams, then, you know, I'm not nearly as thrilled about having these guys on my team because I could probably get two better guys without too much trouble. Frank Gore is also 30, so think about that. Yeah. 1,200 yards over the last two years. Exactly. So. Eight touchdowns each of the last two years. He's like, uh, so you think he's a second round pick? Oh, easily. I think he's an early second round pick. The early second round or middle of the second round? Early to middle. I mean, it depends on, depends on your league setup. I mean, we say that all the time. Yeah. Depends on how your league is set up here. I think that he could be another great player. He could have another great year, like we've seen time and time again from him. Just maybe he does it so consistently, you just don't see the breakout games. But guess what? I don't want a breakout game. I want somebody who's going to consistently put double-digit fantasy points for me every week. And I think he's a guy who can do that, especially with Colin Kaepernick there. You're going to see a lot of that spread. You're going to see a lot of the read options. He's going to get his touches. He's going to get his yards. He might not get 100-yard games, but he'll be at 80 yards, maybe a touchdown. That's a 12-point week. Can't argue with that. And the whole Niners offense is more dynamic now with Colin Kaepernick. So you can have a lot of playmakers. Kaepernick, you know, a great runner. Uh, Frank Gore. It, it, when he's in there, it's more of like a team, I don't want to say team member, because it's always a team member, but more players are getting involved. You know what I mean? You can have a few different running backs. It's just kind of more like, it's like a college offense. Almost. Absolutely. And it's more of like, we're just going to pound Gore up the middle. I think that's maybe why his value drop a little bit too. Definitely. Just to uh, point out a couple real quick before we go on another break. A couple guys who have really dropped off the map. They were like top 10 last year. Maurice Jones Drew, Darren McFadden, out of our top 15, some even out of our top 20. Could be, they could be a diamond erupt. Either one of those guys could explode this year. You could pick them up in the third round and they could be like an Adrian Peterson. If you're in a keeper league, I definitely say you take a risk on, on yeah. one of those two because all of a sudden you might have a absolute stud for next year in the first round. I mean, I don't normally say play for next year, but if you're in a keeper league, you got to at least think about it. So just something else to kind of interesting how you got guys going on the rise other guys going down Absolutely. all right we'll be back in a moment we'll talk a little bit about some of the sleeper running backs that you should think about outside of this top 20 that you really maybe not thinking about and then some general draft running back strategy as we talk here at the crane room bar and grill stop by if you're in the area we'll be back in a moment here's five It's that time of year again, where you try to fill rosters, scooping hot rumors before the other guy in your league can, watching NFL action more for the players and not so much for the games. Yeah, it's fantasy football time again. With all the analysis and information floating around the internet, who should you trust? Well, look no further than the 360 Sports Network's own Fantasy Football Toolkit. Join me, the Lost Cause, and the Mad Scientist every week as we break down stats, games, player performances, injuries, and a whole lot more. But who wants to wait a week? Get your fill of fantasy football information in my daily segment featured on the 360 Sports Network, the Daily Picks and Blink. In under 10 minutes, you get fantasy football information, NFL news, injury reports, starts, sits, studs, duds, previews, reviews, and a whole lot more. Basically, everything to help make your fantasy football team sizzle. 
So check out the Fantasy Football Toolkit and the Pinkskin Blink at 360sportsnetwork.com as well as fantasyfootballtoolkit.com all to make sure that your team isn't a lost cause. You're the place to go to watch the game. Looking for a great game day atmosphere that also does great food, great service, and the most variety of craft beer in town? Then come on down to the Green Room Bar and Grill in Newcastle, where the beer is always cold and the best wings are right here. The specials every night, there's always a good deal waiting for you at the Grand Room. Come out on Mondays for $2.23 ounce domestic drafts from 7 to 9, Tuesdays, burger nights. And to play $5 burgers from 7 to 9 p.m. And of course, if Fox is your gig, Wednesday is your night. It's Fox the night uh, goes bonanza. Thursday, it's pound for pound wings all night at $2 domestic drafts from 7 to 9. And mixed drinks are half off every Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. And Saturdays, from 7 to 9, it's $1 off draft beers. And for every Pirates game this year, enjoy a 23-ounce icy light for just $2. Whether well, it's to watch the game at the bar, enjoy a night out, at the outdoor patio or sit down with your honey for dinner at the restaurant, the Cray Room has everything that you need. So come on down to the Cray Room, bar and grill, get your fix on wings, sports and beer. Just off Route 18 in beautiful, sunny Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Have a unique fantasy football league set up? Do the draft guides and cheat sheets available not provide you with any help because they're only for a standard league? Well, it's time for that to change. 360 Sports Network provides you with a free, personalized, and customized fantasy football cheat sheet so that you can dominate your league no matter what the scoring system is set up. You enter the league settings, then use our projected stats or statistics projected on your own, and in seconds you have the perfect draft guide for your league's unique setup. So stop using cheat sheets that don't represent how your league runs. Go to 360sportsnetwork.com to download your free customizable cheat sheet and dominate your league. More fantasy football arguments on 3SN Live. Welcome back to 3SN, everybody. We are live here at the Green Room Bar and Grill in beautiful Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today, we are talking about the top running backs of fantasy football, how to go about selecting your running back, strategies, and everything in between. Um, right now, we're going to talk about sleeper running backs. Dotson, who should fantasy owners keep an eye on in the draft? Well, when you get through those first two rounds... Most of the time, you're going to have probably one running back and one skill position, whether I say skill position, one other position, I should say. A wide receiver probably, maybe a quarterback, maybe you took a gamble on Jimmy Graham and got a tight end. The third round, if you haven't gotten two running backs already, you better be looking to get a third. Fourth round, if you still haven't gotten your second, you're running out of time, you better think of one. There are a couple guys who are going to maybe sneak under the radar and might slip all the way to that fourth round, and if so... You should jump on them immediately. The one that jumps to my head, especially in a PPR league, I could see this guy being a top 10 running back if it's PPR league, and that's Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush is in the perfect system for him. If a guy by the name of Joyke Bell could go in Detroit, he went to Wayne State College, if he can go and get like 40, 50 catches last year with Detroit, imagine what Reggie Bush, a guy who has made an NFL living by catching passes out of the backfield, imagine what he could do with it. I think Reggie Bush is a huge pickup, especially if it's in the PPR league. I think he gets almost 70 catches this year. And that is a very good pick. So, uh, Reggie Bush has been, at least a lot of media outlet type, uh, read into, had him as a sleeper, good sleeper pick. Almost to the point where is he really even a sleeper anymore since everyone knows about him. But are there any rookie running backs, anyone we should keep an eye on? I definitely think Le'Veon Bell is a fourth or fifth round pick. Mm-hmm, I watched this guy come up 
through the ranks at Michigan State. And a lot of the issues that you'll see with a rookie running back is how can he maintain a full 16-game schedule? Does he have the toughness? Can he make it through a season? Does he have that longevity and toughness? This guy averaged over 30 touches, over 30 carries per game at Michigan State. They just fed him the ball over and over and over and over again. And then they gave it to him again. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I saw him at 35 carries, almost 200 yards rushing. He was their workhorse. Now, are the Steelers going to do that to him? No, absolutely not. He's not going to work him that badly, especially, I mean, you've seen already in the preseason what the Ross Stevens Howling is going to do as a third down back. But Le'Veon Bell is going to be your first and second down back throughout the entire season. No questions asked. He's a big guy. He's strong. He's not a small, weak guy who's frail and could get injured. He's somebody who's going to be there all 16 games. And as a rookie, that's something really good. Somebody who's been able to do it all those years. I think 1,000 yards is a definite possibility for him. Oh, I think so, too. I mean... Look, uh, Lacey and Ball were the, you know, the more, I don't want to say famous running backs, but the more noticeable running backs in the draft last year. Not but, the more talented ones. Oh, exactly. Not in every media outlet I read, every expert says Bell was the, actually the best one, the more talented one. And he just feels like a Steeler guy. I mean, he just fits. He's a strong running back, DSB. And the Steelers, you know, their running backs are injury and rumble prone. And he fits their system well. And Rashard Mendenhall is now in Pittsburgh West, Arizona. Of course. Of course. Like, where else are they going to go? And they're going to—they're just going to keep beating Le'Veon Bell. I mean, you want to talk about being the best of those three? You mentioned Eddie Lacy. He's probably not even going to get the starting job, losing it to another rookie in Jonathan Franklin. So, don't think that he's like you know the great guy. I mean, just because he played in Alabama, it's because he was benching 400 pounds or whatever, or, or squatting 400 pounds. I don't even know what he was doing, but that doesn't equate to NFL success. What I see from Le'Veon Bell is somebody who did the same thing over and over again, 30, 35 times per game, and didn't miss time. Now, he missed the first preseason game. That was very precautionary. Watch and see what he does in game two. As long as he gets his touches, doesn't look slow, sluggish, anything like that. See ya. See ya. I think that he's going to be absolutely fine. I think he's somebody you should look to get probably fourth round. And most people aren't going to take him until fifth or sixth. Probably so I think not. you can get a nice steal with that there in the fourth round. Oh, absolutely. Now, what do you think? You mentioned um, you mentioned Monty Ball. I mean, the old Wisconsin guy who's a Heisman finalist. I didn't think he was as talented of a running back as Bell or Eddie Lacy, but he got the accolades. He's someone who had the hardware as like top Big Ten offensive player, all that junk. How do you see him doing going into that new system? He's going into Denver, so he's got to be able to catch passes. Can he do it well enough? The only thing with Denver is that they have so many weapons already. I mean, for God's sakes, Wes Walker's like the number four receiver. So, the, the fact that he's going, remember I said earlier that Bell was in the perfect situation. I don't know if it's the same thing now for him, Denver. So, it, not as much an insult as to him as is where he's going. I don't think you're going to see really much right away anyway. Just because there's such like a flutter of great talented players down there. And you have, you know, Manning throwing against everyone. And... Now, the one thing about that is the fact that when they went and got him late second round, it was, they immediately adjusted their offense a little bit to fit him. They put in a couple of the zone run plays where they made that one cut, which is what he did a lot of in Wisconsin. So they know that if they're going to be successful, that they have to give this guy an ability and a chance to shine. Yeah. I think he's going to do that. I don't think he's going to be as good as some of the other guys, but he's definitely worth thinking of. I wouldn't put him until probably the fifth round, though. But yeah. if he's my, he's my, um, my third running back or my slash, I'm insanely happy. I think he's someone that through the middle of the season can start to show up. Definitely. You know what I, mean? I mean, definitely. Another guy who I think could show up later in the year... Normally, I stay away from New England running backs because they've done this running back by committee. And they still have it. Even though they've lost Danny Woodhead, they do still have Shane Green. They still do have Stephen Ridley. And now they have, like, Eric Blunt there, too. But seeing the wide receiver issues that the Patriots have and seeing the way they can line up Shane Vereen as a wide receiver, get a linebacker on him, and he can catch passes like no other running back I've seen other than, like, a Reggie Bush, like we've talked about before. 
I'm looking to get Shane Marine as possibly my, my third running back as my slash type player. Oh, absolutely. I heard um, even uh, Stephen Ridley, Marine, those are two guys to watch. Um, again, though, Patriots are in such kind of a question mark, but they're going to be, they're the Patriots, so they're going to be good. So, no, I hear you they're, there. They're, they're, those are two other maybe fifth or sixth round running backs to keep an eye on, too. Another guy, definitely PPR, he can go from being, in a normal league, you're talking seventh, eighth round at best. Yeah. PPR league, you can move him all the way up maybe to a second round pick, Darren Sproles. Now, how do you feel about Ahmad Bradshaw going to the Colts? I don't know. I'm very torn. I mean, I think he's finally gotten rid of the fumbleitis that he had a couple years ago with New York. I mean, he kind of got thrown under the bus with the whole David Wilson thing, because I think it, it, it was kind of ironic, because David Wilson, who became the new fumbling machine, kept his job as fumbleitis, even when, when Alma Bradshaw had the job and he fumbled, he was immediately taken off the field and didn't play for the next three weeks. So yeah. it, it was a little bit of parody there. I don't know. I think Bradshaw, I don't know. He did what he needed to do last year. I don't know. He's, he should lead the Colts attack. I, I don't think there's anybody out there who's going to take over. He's probably one of the lower starting running backs, though, of the top 32 fantasy-wise in my mind. But I, I don't know. Um, I want to talk real quick about Darren Sproles, just because he is such, such unique a guy. He's unique. You know what we've not talked about is MJD. Just that he's not worth talking about, it seems, after the way last year ended. What a shame. Isn't it? I mean, he was probably a first round, early second round. Now if he's a, uh, in the third round, it might be lucky. I don't know. I think the fact he is getting older as well, his body has started to betray him a little bit. He's not exactly the great guy that he was. Yeah. I mean, he, he was a small, compact guy who was able to lay a punch. Now he's the one taking the hit. When you lose that speed... You know, you really don't get it back. It's kind of one of those things. Receivers, running backs, players that make their career on speed, there's just no way to get it back. And, and you know what yeah. it is? You just age, you just get old, you get worn. It, just, it is what it is. Don't forget how pathetic that offense is in Jacksonville, too. And, oh, yeah, that's and you know what? I think the Jaguars are seeing that they've lost that speed in MJD. Cause you know who they went and got this year? Denard Robinson. Yeah. So, something to look at, too. Maybe Denard goes and runs a lot of the of a little spread offense, wildcat gimmick type stuff out of it. And so MGD could be a huge play. You never know. But I mean, I think that the age of these short mini running backs is kind of high. Phasing out kind of. It feels like it. I mean Joe well, Cruz however, well is going down. Scrolls I think is gonna be on the downhill. I mean he still catches up seventy passes a year. And unless, that's just the offense. Unless you're uh, in a league where kick returns um, gets points for players. The Rod Stevens Hallings from Pittsburgh, he could be something special. Especially when you see the third down. If he, if he does the third down stuff like he did in the first preseason game, like I said, normally I don't look at preseason too much. <coughs> Looking at the second and third string, though, is where I look at it. And something like that just really jumped out at how well he ran the ball, caught the ball out of the backfield, and just how much confidence it seemed that Pittsburgh had with them, with him, even in a preseason game. But yeah, if you get points for returns, return yards, return touchdowns, that's especially where you look at someone like a Darius Sproles, a Ross Stevens Howard, even a Patrick Peterson if you'll allow it, because it sounds like he's going to be not only quarterback, but go Deion Sanders on you and be a, a little bit of a wideout, too. Uh -huh. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take one last break. When we come back, we're going to talk what our general strategy is going into a draft, based on your draft position, all that good stuff, and discuss what you're doing with your team in terms of running backs. That's when we come back here live at the Crane Room Bar and Grill. We'll be back in a moment. Have a unique fantasy football league set up? Do the draft guides and cheat sheets available not provide you with any help because they're only for a standard league? Well, it's time for that to change. 360 Sports Network provides you with a free, personalized, and customized fantasy football cheat sheet so that you can dominate your league no matter what the scoring system is set up. You enter the league settings, then use our projected stats or statistics projected on your own, and in seconds you have the perfect draft guide for your league's unique setup. So stop using cheat sheets that don't represent how your league runs. Go to 360sportsnetwork.com to download your free customizable cheat sheet and dominate your league. The 
360 Sports Network is not a blog. We are a network, a collaboration of websites, blogs, radio stations, restaurants, and more. We are a group created by the fans, for the fans. Whatever the fans feel is newsworthy in the world of sports, we talk about. We believe that everybody is a fan, everyone is an analyst. That's the whole 360 concept. We invite all fans to join the 360 Sports Network by posting on their website directly at 360sportsnetwork.com or by linking their posts to the collaborative network. You can also be a part of the show tonight by tweeting us at 3S Network. Thank you for your interest in the 360 Sports Network. And we're back for more. This is 3SN Live. Welcome back, 3SN Live, talking running backs, fantasy football. If you have questions, we encourage you to send us all of your fantasy questions. You can talk to us right on our website, 360sportsnetwork.com. Twitter, at 3S Network. You can talk to Alex and I directly through Twitter. For me, at 3SN Dot. For Alex, well, he's no longer at 3SN D Lab, isn't he? Because he thinks he's cool. No, cool. I'm at 3SN He is still at 3SN D Lab. That's right. I have real tweets are for the other one. Sports tweets is for 3SN D he thinks he's so cool that he can have two Twitter he has, accounts. Like, three Facebooks. Uh, two. People use Who it. are he you? He has three Facebooks. People use it for different reasons. He apparently is social media schizophrenic. That's apparently what social it is. Social media ADD. <laughs> that as well. All right, so, like we said, we're going to wrap up today by talking about what your general draft strategy is going to be when it comes to especially what the running backs are going to do. Obviously, number one pick, I think we're all, we've all agreed – Adrian Peterson has to be your number one pick. If you don't have a number one pick, though, are you taking a running back in the first round still? Yeah. I think because this year's class is so deep. I mean, we talked about this last week. Unless you have, like, a Rodgers or Brady on the... That's my question. Yeah, I mean... If you're in a PPR league, do you take Adrian Peterson or Tom Brady, healthy Tom Brady, as your first pick? Well, absolutely, you take... Adrian Peterson, I don't care what league format you're in. But I, see, unless it's a big name quarterback like a Rodgers or a Brady or whoever, I go for running back. Running backs are king. Like the, the Rodgers, the Breeze, right? those are special exceptions. In general, you generally don't need quarterbacks for the later rounds anyway. Right. In general, go with running backs because running backs are king. I agree completely. Um, the only thing that I'm looking at is just looking at the – at the drafting, at how many points you get per game, how how different it is, uh, our value-based drafting system, that when you get past probably the first two or three, the difference between quarterback four and quarterback 12 is nothing. So there's no point in me wasting my time on one of those early quarterbacks when I can go and get the same or even a better one later on in the day. So I'm staying away from quarterbacks early. If Drew Brees is still there in the second round, maybe I go for him. But I don't think it's going to be somebody's going to stretch too early. I'll be happy in getting two solid running backs, and I'll take a, a Matt Stafford or a Tony Romo when they're still available in the sixth or seventh round. That's where I'm getting the value out of my draft. Absolutely no doubt in my mind. So, so I'm going to definitely get running back early. Second round, if one of the top wideouts is there, maybe if Calvin is still there, I doubt it. But maybe even say like... Um, if you want to roll the dice on maybe a Larry Fitzgerald in the early third round, maybe, I could see that. Marshall, A.J. Green, Des Bryant, I think will have a big year. You could take them in the second round. Unless one of those guys are available and you've gone pretty much running back straight through the whole way yeah. so far, I'm probably going to take two running backs to start. <clears throat> there has to be something really special. And honestly, one of the things that is kind of interesting, we haven't talked about tight ends yet on the show. We will. We'll when do you, receivers next week, tight ends. One thing I want to bring up, what running backs do you stay clear of? I have one. His name's Darren McFadden. Why is that? Because I've had him the last few years, and he's either hurt or not produced. He's getting older. He's just not <clears throat> He's just not the guy. For, I don't even think he's in any top 20s now. Yeah, he's right on the borderline of ours for being a top 20. No, I agree. He... He has, not, he has missed at least three games each of the last three years. 
That's a huge red flag, red flag in my mind. That he's missed that many games over the course of years. And yeah, I can't blame you. Another guy, kind of along the same lines, Ryan Matthews. He's missed at least two games each of the last three years. He's missed four games two out of the last three years. So somebody who, again, doesn't play and doesn't exactly produce that well when he does play, not really worth my effort at that point. So those are two guys that I'm saying maybe stay away from. I'm not too confident about the New York Jets right now. I think Chris Ivory could be good. Could. Am I going to really roll the dice on him? Probably not. David Wilson, I'm not too thrilled about him either. Even though he is going to be, it sounds like the workhorse up there. I mean, they still got Andre Brown, but I think they're going to split carries at least to an extent. I mean, both are going to get their yards. Both are going to get their touches. So I stay away from Carolina backs. I stay away from Cincinnati backs. I don't like Rashard Mendenhall. So those are some guys that we personally aren't that big of fans of. But really, it's more of strategy-wise. I think you've got to get at least two running backs early because there's a big drop-off after, like, number 20 that you don't want one, any of those guys anymore. And you don't want to be putting those guys in your starting lineup consistently. Where wideouts, you have a lot more depth. And think about it. So many teams going into three wide receiver sets. I think it makes perfect sense. I mean, James Jones is the number three wideout on his team. I have no problem being my number two wideout in fantasy because he gets that many points. It's just the way the game is now. Absolutely. Final thoughts, Mr. DeLaverson. <laughs> Final thoughts. Uh, running backs are king. Stay away from McFadden, MJD. And um, this is definitely one of the better classes of running backs this year. It feels like it, doesn't it? Yes. Well, that's the Saint talking right there. Well, who are you again? Are you the center? Oh, I was always a center. Yeah, I always Greg. go a little. He was right in the middle, I think. Well, what, do we, what was his like nickname? Oh, he was, he's just a mad scientist. He's just crazy. He's just crazy. He's just crazy. I'm the value man, but I definitely have my little devilish instincts right there. And they tell me, even though I want to get those two running backs early, all the math drafts I do, if I don't get two running backs early, I don't like the way my team ends up in the end. However, I see myself getting that stud tight end, which we'll talk about again later. Jimmy Graham is so much high above everybody else. That if well, I don't get him, him if I don't get Jimmy Graham, I'm not going to get any decent tight end, and then I don't like the way that. So he's a second so round pick. He might be my second round pick. If I have a late first round, early second round pick, I'm probably taking him in the second round, and then because I should should be able to get a uh, Reggie Bush, Darren Sproles, Le'Veon Bell. I should be able to get at least one of those coming back through in the third round. That might be a risk because you never know how the, how everybody else is thinking. But take a look at how the draft goes, and I encourage you, go do mock drafts, go onto our website, get those customizable cheat sheets out, because I'll tell you what, there is no better way to predict what you should expect at least, and see where you get the best value than by going and using these cheat sheets made just for your specific league. There's no better way to do it. I think that about wraps it up here at 360 Sports Network. Again, follow us on Twitter at 3S Network, 3SN Dot, 3SN D Lab. We got all your sports updates coming at you. And of course, don't forget about the Fantasy Football Toolkit. Thanks to our man, The Lost Cause, and the Pigskin Blink right there on our website. Lots of daily updates always coming at you right there on 3SN Live and right there at 360SportsNetwork.com. For Alex, the Saints, the Laverson. I'm the value man, James Dawson. Have a great night, everybody. Cheers.